I'm Dr. Matthew Willis of Tennessee Orthopedic Alliance in Nashville, Tennessee, and this is my advanced class on glenoid exposure. The first thing we're going to talk today about is the steps that I take to expose the glenoid. Uh, as everyone knows, maximal glenoid exposure is one of the most important aspects of shoulder arthroplasty. Taking the necessary steps using various tips and tricks uh, can benefit you in many ways, making the operation easier and your outcomes better. So what steps are necessary for ideal glenoid exposure? Uh, it first starts with patient positioning. Uh, for most surgeons, uh, positioning the patient in a so-called beach chair position with the head of the bed elevated somewhere around 45 degrees uh, is the ideal positioning. It's important to keep the head neutral, not to pre-tension the brachial plexus by turning the head away or in either direction. It's also important to adequately expose the shoulder area and have the arm free to allow easy motion uh, for humeral preparation. There are a number of exposures for shoulder arthroplasty. By far the most common exposure utilized by shoulder surgeons, including myself, is the delta pectoral exposure, and that's the one we'll focus on today. Once the patient is prepped and draped, uh, the next step is the delta pectoral exposure. So once the patient is adequately prepped and draped, we begin the procedure. The first step is to identify the delta pectoral interval. Frequently that can be done by locating the coracoid. Uh, palpation of the soft tissues usually allows identification of the uh, sulcus between the deltoid and the pectoralis. We start off with a skin incision using a fresh blade and move on to electrocautery. We then proceed with some blunt dissection of the subcutaneous tissues down to the delta pectoral interval. Uh, I like to use a Gelpi retractor as my uh, preferred uh, retraction device of the skin and subcutaneous tissue. However, there are a number of commercially available instruments which are surgeon preference. Next, I'm going to start proximally, localize the uh, fatty uh, tissue which is frequently found in between the proximal portions of the deltoid and the pectoralis. We then uh, develop that interval. The Army-Navy can then be used to retract the deltoid proximally. Uh, after identifying the cephalic vein, a uh, surgeon can choose to either take it medially or laterally. Uh, the advantage to moving it medially is less retractor trauma in theory. Uh, in this case, that's what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll take it laterally again. It's surgeon preference. Uh, once we identify the cephalic vein, I'm using my finger to protect it and bluntly dissect along the length of the vein. Um, any uh, tributaries to the deltoid are identified and cauterized. As we are working our way down, I will take the uh, Army Navy and have my assistant follow me along. Uh, in this case and in every case, I have one assistant, uh, my physician assistant or first assistant, um, standing behind the patient retracting. Um, the drapes are under some tension in what we call a ponytail and actually clip all of the anterior instrumentation to the drapes anteriorly. So only one assistant is, is required for this type of procedure. Now proceeding on with some more blunt dissection, I get my finger up underneath the fascia and release. Once we've done that, we can then uh, use what's called a brown retractor, B-R-O-W-N-E, to retract the deltoid and protect the uh, muscle. Additional development of the subcutaneous tissues and mobilization of the uh, cephalic vein medially for improved exposure can be performed. Uh, limited release of the coracoacromial ligament can also improve exposure. We can then move on to the next portions of the procedure. In this portion of the video, we've identified the biceps tendon sheath. Frequently, there is disease of the tendon itself, uh, which can be a pain generator. So my preference is to perform a tenodesis of the biceps in virtually every case. Uh, you could certainly make the case to perform a tenotomy of the biceps as well. My preference is to use a series of uh, number two non-absorbable sutures, uh, depending on tendon and tissue quality, and sew the biceps to the pectoralis itself. Um, once the tendon is secured to the pectoralis, I 
release and remove excess biceps tendon and remove excess suture. In the next chapter, we're gonna move on to subscap management and humeral sided prep.